Hey guys, in this video we are going to build a responsive footer for different screen sizes by using the CSS Flexbox layout system. And also I am going to show you how to position the footer in the bottom of the page even if there is no or little content at the top of the page. So let's get started. Alright, so firstly let's define our HTML structure. We can put our whole footer inside the footer tag. And inside this footer tag, we can define the sections of our footer. The first section will be the upper section part, which we are going to divide our footer into multiple columns. And the second section will be the copyright section. So let's write here copyright for now. And we are going to divide the upper section under three separate columns. The first one will be the about section. The second one let's say services and the last one column will be contact so about services and contact okay before we go further down with the html structures i would like to shortly show how to build our footer layout and we are going to use flexbox to build our footer layout this can be seem a little bit complicated, so let's give here for each columns and rows a different background color. First of all, for our footer, I am going to give a black background color. And the text color is going to be white. And I'm going to assign different background colors for this about services and contact columns. And now each of the footer row has a different background color. And now what I would like to do is to redefine these first three rows as columns and put them side by side. But I would like to leave the copyright as the last row of the footer. So to do that, we are going to use the Flexbox display flex, which will change the display behavior of our footer. But what I want here is to put our copyright at the very bottom of the footer. So I'm going to change the flex direction back to column. And now our copyright will stay at the bottom of our footer. Here we can define an inner flex box. So let's define here another class as container. And this will be a new flex container, which is going to place these three rows side by side as columns. So let's go ahead and do that. First container will have a flex feature. And now as you see, our rows are placed side by side, but there is a lot of space as you can see. So next, what we are going to do is to define these three columns to be equally divided to take the full width of this footer. And to do that, we need to use the flex grow feature and let's assign one to all of them. And as you can see, now they are divided equally. Now there is some empty space here, so let's also reset it. So paddings and margins of the page is going to be zero. And let's assign our body a different background color. Okay, so now we can move on. Let's extend our web page a little bit. Now we can continue building our HTML structure. Let's continue with the first section, the about section. Inside the about section, we need a title like h3 and some example text like this. But now the problem is that this column is taking much more space. However, we would like to have all of the three columns to be equally divided. And to do that, I need to define to our to each of our column an additional flexbox property which is the flex basis as 100%. Now, if I define all of them 100%, then they will be again divided equally. Okay, now the problem is solved and we can continue. Let's give them another font family. So I'll go back to the body section. Let's give them Arial. Save it. Okay, looks much better. Let's also add the same title to the second and to third column as services and contact. Let's also add some space between the title and the paragraph here. 
So every H3 element inside the container will have some margin. At the bottom, let's give them 20 pixels. And let's also increase the font size of the title as 20 pixels. Okay, looks better. Now we can move on with the second column. Now inside the services section, I am going to define an unordered list. And inside this list, we are going to have different roles and links for the services of this website. We can also add a link and let's add a couple of more. Okay, now we can also add some styling to this list. So inside the unordered list of this services section, first of all, let's remove this bullets here and let's add some white text colors. List style type, if we define it as none, then this will remove the bullets. We can also add some line height to the rows here, to the services here. So line height, let's make it as two, for example. That's a bit too much. Let's make it 1.6. Okay, looks much better. And now we can style the links here. So services. So every link inside the services section will have a white text color and no underline. The text decoration will be none. Now, when the user hovers, then maybe we can add some underline to these services and also a different color. So for the same links, if the user will hover, we can give a light blue and the text decoration can be underlined. Save it. Let's try again. And now we have this blue nice color. Okay, now let's move on with the contact section. We are going to use a similar unordered list to define the contact section. So I will just copy it here and I'm going to change these parts as address, phone number and the mail address. We don't need this section. Okay, now let's also add some styling here. I will copy the same list from services and let's change them with the contact class. Save it and looks much better. Actually, we can even assign here a little bit more space. So I will make it as two, for example, and looks much better. Okay, now as the next step, I'm going to change this copyright text here with the original one, like this. And let's also assign here a copyright class. And what I want to do here is that to add some spacing, for example, let's give some padding to the top and the bottom of this copyright row as 15 pixels and zero from sides. So the top and the bottom will have 15 pixels of paddings, but zero from sides. Next, we can center the text. So text align, center. And let's add here a little border at the top so we can divide it. So border top, one pixel, solid. Let's make it gray. Now, what we see here is that the second column has a lot of empty space, but actually we can make it a bit smaller and give these two columns some more space. So let's do that. As we can see currently, all of these columns are have a flex basis of 100%. So each of them are equally divided, but I want to make this a bit smaller. So let's assign here, for example, a 70%. And when I do that, now the services section has some less space. Now let's remove the background colors of these columns and let's see how it looks. So I'm going to erase the background colors of the sections. And now we see here a problem. There is no space between the first column and the second column. So let's take it back shortly. Now, since here doesn't look so good, we can add some space between these columns. You can add some space with the margin property. If 
you prefer, like this. Or there is an alternative, you can use at the container the gap property, which will do basically the same thing, add some space between the columns. Let's make it for example 20 pixels, which basically does the same thing. I'm not quite sure whether this property works in every browser. So if you try this and it's not working properly, then you can use the margin property. Let's remove the background colors again. We can also add some padding to make our footers to have a better design. So I'm going to define some padding to this container class. So let's give it 50 pixels of a padding like this. The sides don't look so good, so let's make it smaller and it looks much better. Uh, as the next step, we can now we need to make it responsive for different devices. Now, when I extend our web page, we see that the footer looks bad. What I want to do is to have a fixed width as the intersection of this footer and to position them, to position these columns in the center. So let's do that. Let's try it with the developer tools. Actually, it will be easier to try. Now, I want this container to have a maximum width. Let's make it 1000 pixels, for example. And I want to position the container in the center of the page. And we can do that with the margin auto property. Okay. Now, when I close it, we see that it looks much better. If I increase the screen size, the container the inner container will be aligned in the center of the page. So what about smaller devices such as iPads or iPhones? So let's try it. Now currently it will look like this on a mobile phone and on an iPad it will look like this. Actually it's fine but it doesn't look good on mobile devices. So for smaller screens actually it will be better to position these columns again as rows. So let's do that. I need to define here a media query and apply the new rules for a screen size which has a maximum width of 768 and if our screen size is smaller than 768 then the columns will be positioned each on a single row so i need to use the container class and apply here a flex direction as a column let's try it now i am making it smaller and now, as you see, they are all positioned each on a single row. Let's also show it again on this view. So when I am on a mobile view, then it will look like this, which is actually much better. And if we are back on a larger screen size, then they will be positioned side by side. Okay, now we have a responsive footer. And finally, let's position our footer in the bottom of the page. Normally, if there is enough content above, then the footer will be automatically positioned at the bottom. But if you don't have any content, then basically you can come here and then change the position of the footer from relative to fixed. And to give it a reference point in the bottom of the page, such as zero. Now, if I save it, we can see that our footer will be positioned on the bottom of the page. If I make this 20 pixels, for example, then the footer will be positioned 20 pixels above from the bottom of the page because this will be the reference point. If you find the video useful, please hit the like button and thank you guys for watching.